video is about the five key principles of regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is an agricultural practice that leaves the soil in better condition after harvest than before. Now, if you look on the internet, you will find lots of places where these principles are listed. I like the one that uh, Gabe Brown and Ray Archuleta came up with, and those are the ones I'm going to use here. However, you know, they are from the Midwest, and so I'm going to expand a little bit more to reflect our dry climate. I'm also going to include a little more information and stress the life in the soil. The first principle of regenerative agriculture is disturb the soil as little as possible. I rephrase this a little bit and like to say promote the life in the soil. The first thing you do is stop tilling. There's a saying I like to say, uh, stop the killing, no more tilling. When you till the soil, you are killing soil life like crazy. It's not only the earthworms, but the fungi. And you're adding a lot of air that causes the bacteria to go crazy. It, at first, it seems like it's doing good, but in the long run, it's just destroying the tilth of your soil. You also need to cut out those synthetic fertilizers. They kill life in the soil. I mean, it's crazy. If you, the farmers will put on this synthetic fertilizer. It does help at first, but what it does in the long run is it forces them to go back to the synthetic fertilizers over and over because the life in the soil has been destroyed. Also, you want to stop using anything with the word side at the end, end of it, such as pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. They kill everything. It's not just bad guys. It kills the good guys, too. And the final thing to consider is, you know, in our dry climate here in New Mexico, you really got to stop and think about water harvesting. What can you do to stretch that water that does fall onto the ground and get it into your crops? You also need to think about windbreaks. Windbreaks help prevent a lot of evaporation, especially in our windy climate here in New Mexico. The second principle of regenerative agriculture is keep the soil covered. I like to rephrase this to say protect the life in the soil. Keeping the soil covered is an absolute must in our climate. It holds the water and prevents it from evaporating. If you want to try something, go into your garden and you know, mulch one section and don't mulch the other section. After rain, you know, wait a couple days and go out and feel that soil. You're going to see the area that under the soil that's under that mulch is cooler and it's holding that water, whereas the unmulched is probably dry by now. So also, it's important to keep that soil cool. You know, microbes don't like to be hot. In an unmulched uh, garden bed, you will find very little soil life in the top you know, one or two inches because it bakes. Keep them cool. Mulch helps prevent compaction from rain. If you have just bare soil, when the rain falls on it, it breaks apart the structure of the soil and leaves a compacted layer on top, which doesn't allow the soil to breathe as well. Which reminds me, don't cover with solid plastic. The soil has to breathe. I like to use straw a lot for starters because you can buy it and you can cover a lot of area. But think of a variety of stuff you can use. Leaves, whatever you can find from your garden. The third principle of regenerative agriculture is keep live roots in the soil for as long as possible. I like to call this feed the life in the soil. If you want to build soil fast, you must have live roots. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's the plants that are producing sugar to feed the soil life that makes the soil build fast. You can do all the lasagna gardening and adding all this organic matter that you can. It won't build the soil as fast as live roots. Okay, if you were to take a sample of soil 
right next to a root versus out away from a root, you will find that the amount of life is 10 to 100 times greater around a root. This is what builds soil. That Those microbes are the ones that are going to be creating the micro aggregates, the macro aggregates that gives you your good soil tilt to hold the water to allow you to grow better. Michael Phillips in his book, The Holistic Orchard, explains it very well. You need plenty of life in the soil. Like he grows apple trees and he has all sorts of life around it, all sorts of perennials. That's what gives his crops their vitality. Regenerative agriculture principle number four is promote a diversity of plants. Or you can just say div diversify the life in the soil. There have been multiple studies done that shows that when you have multiple species living together, they help each other grow. There was a specifically one experiment done in North Dakota where they were trying uh, different combinations of cover crops. And they were doing like uh, one species, two species, four species, eight species together. Well, they sowed the fields in the spring and then proceeded to have an extreme drought. They thought for sure that their experiment had failed. And so they, when they went back, they looked at the results. The single species were all dried up and dead. The double, two species were dried up and dead. But what surprised them most was the eight species cover crop was actually flourishing. It was alive. And they showed pictures. It was amazing. You could look at one side and the plants are alive and just right next to it they were dead so this is showing you that when you have diversity of plants in the soil diversity of life in the soil you will be growing much better than if you didn't principle number five is incorporate animals if possible i like to call it spread the life in the soil if you were to look at manure under a microscope, you will see it is so concentrated with bacteria and other life. This life that's in there is the same life that the plants need. I mean, this is where it came from. The animals are eating the green part of the plant. It's going into their rumen where it's fermenting, digesting. These microbes are concentrating and then they poop it out. You're spreading the good guys all around when you do this. Now, it did say incorporate if possible. If you can't do it, the way you get around it is you use compost. Compost is basically doing the same thing. You're intensifying the good microbes in one place so you can spread it. It's not as good as an animal. An animal, well, first of all, does all the work for you, so you don't have to go out and spread it. But the concentration in manure is much higher than in compost. But if you can't do manure, definitely do compost. Okay, just for a recap, I want to go over the five principles real quick. Number one, disturb the soil as little as possible or promote the life in the soil. Number two, keep the soil covered which is protect the life in the soil. Number three, keep live roots in the soil for as long as possible, which is feed the life in the soil. Number four, promote a diversity of plants, which is diversify the life in the soil. And number five, incorporate animals if possible, which is spread the life in the soil. Work and Beauty is a 501c3 nonprofit based in West Central New Mexico. We operate on donations from people like you. Please consider donating money for our cause by either sending a check to our address listed here or through our website at workinbeauty.org. Thank you very much.